can you solve this equation? Just using standard algebra, that is. I'd be impressed if you could, because, well, it's impossible. For polynomial equations up to fourth degree, like quadratics, cubics, there's a clear path defining the solution, just using basic operations, extracting roots, and so on. Which is pretty nice. Where things get interesting is when we hit fifth degree equations, quintics. In the early 19th century, mathematicians Abel and Ruffini independently proved that not all quintic equations can be solved using the same algebraic methods we use for lower degree equations. No matter how you approach it, you can't solve this equation using just basic operations. This discovery shattered the long-held belief that with enough ingenuity, any equation could be tamed algebraically. Although from this disappointment emerged a deeper understanding of the nature of equations and helped develop entirely new fields of mathematics. But this is just my first on a list of theorems that disappointed mathematicians. The Pythagoreans were an ancient group of mathematicians and philosophers who had a strong belief in the harmony and predictability of the universe. They thought all numbers could be expressed as the ratio of two integers known as rational numbers. This idea was the foundation of their understanding of mathematics and the world around them. To be fair, some of these exact historical details are uncertain, but the story goes that Pythagoras discovered irrational numbers, something that shook their belief system to their core. If we consider the length of a diagonal of a square with side lengths 1, according to the Pythagorean theorem, this diagonal's length should be square root of 2. The kicker being no fraction could perfectly describe the square root of 2 which defied the belief that numbers could always be represented as ratios. Arrow's impossibility theorem is a result that delivers a surprising verdict on the nature of ranked voting systems that satisfy certain criteria. This theorem, which was introduced by economist Kenneth Arrow in the 20th century, says that when voters have three or more options, no voting system can convert the ranked preferences of individuals into a community-wide ranking while meeting Arrow's conditions. Let's try to break this down. Imagine a voting system where voters order their preferences from most to least favorite. Arrow's theorem shows that such a system can't achieve all of the following at once. One, if every voter prefers A over B, then the group prefers A over B universally. Two, the relative ranking between two options should only depend on individual preferences between those two options, not on the presence or absence of other irrelevant alternatives. Three, no single voter's preferences can dictate the group's preferences, unless everyone else is indifferent. The disappointment here lies in realizing that every ranked voting system that satisfies Arrow's conditions must compromise some aspect of what we consider fair. This theorem challenges the pursuit of a perfect voting system and forces us to reconsider what we deem fair in collective decision-making. In the 19th century, Karl Weierstrass introduced a function that shook the mathematical world, known as the Weierstrass function. Here's what makes this function so interesting. It's continuous everywhere, meaning you could draw it without lifting up your pen but it's differentiable nowhere, meaning it doesn't have a well-defined derivative at any point on its curve. In other words, at no point can you find a unique tangent line that perfectly fits the curve. This was a total departure from the intuitive belief that a smooth, continuous curve should be differentiable almost everywhere. Some mathematicians even disdained this idea so much they called it a monstrosity, and thought it was a stain on the beautiful, harmonious world of mathematics. There was some deeply ingrained notion that mathematical functions, especially continuous ones, should exhibit a certain degree of smoothness and predictability. While this function challenged our assumptions of what constitutes a well-behaved function, it also forced mathematicians to rethink the foundation of calculus and analysis. In 1900, Hilbert posed a question that would become known as Hilbert's Tenth Problem. 
He asked for an algorithm that could determine whether any polynomial Diophantine equation has solution in integers. These are equations where variables can only take integer values, ranging from things like x squared minus 2 equals 0, to much more complex arguments involving multiple variables and higher degrees. For decades, mathematicians sought a universal method and algorithm that could sift through any such equation and definitively say, yes, a solution, or no, there isn't. And the resolution came in 1970, but not in the way you'd expect. Mathematicians demonstrated that no such algorithm can solve all these polynomial equations. This means that for some equations, there's simply no systematic way to find an answer. This outcome was a profound disappointment for those who had hoped for a unifying solution and a single elegant method. If the theorems in this video disappointed you, I promise that the numbers in this video will not. Click the video on the screen to check out some absolutely mind-blowing numbers. I'll see you in that one.